Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Grid Review. A storm is right on my tail. I'm hearing thunder. It's getting close. Already the cloud level has lowered down. It'll be upon us soon enough. Every time that I come to this area, it changes. Now we're going into late summer. Gosh, it looks so different. The last time that I was here was maybe a few months ago. <laughs> it's funny, I have camped all over this place, all over this mountain. But every time I come back, I'm always like, did I stay there? Where did I stay at? Better make up my mind pretty quick. I definitely do not have much time. This will have to do, everyone. I don't have much time to look. My watch says rain in 15 minutes. I must have a little bit of service. All that I have to do is get this tarp set up before it begins to rain and I'll be in good shape. <laughs> Look at this ball. What I'm using here is the one tigress tarp and the cordage they provide sucks. It just tangles up so easy. It's ridiculous. My review on this tarp is coming up very soon, folks. It's a great tarp. The cordage sucks. It needs to be replaced. Yeah. Almost done. As you all can see here, I got the tarp up in the nick of time. It is beginning to rain right now. It's sprinkling. With the tarp here, I've pitched this rather high, but I can lower this down if I need to. Later on today, maybe tonight, if I need more protection, I can lower this down or even add another tarp. For this trip, I brought two tarps with me, and that's because of the forecast. The forecast is calling for potential flooding tonight. We'll see if that happens, but I am prepared no matter what. It is only 1230 everyone and it's this dark up here in the clouds It's beautiful I'm thinking here folks. Maybe I should go ahead and set up my tent and just get that out of the way I Might do it just right here The tent will be partially out in the rain partially exposed. That's okay. I know for a fact the tent is waterproof so, I guess that's what I'll do. I'll get this job done now so I don't have to do it later in the heavy rain.
The tent that I'm using for this trip is the Eureka Timberline 2. This is a very interesting shelter. This is my first trip since getting back to North Carolina after driving across the country. That was a ton of fun, but I tell you what, it is good to be back. It's good to be back. North Carolina is so beautiful, so comfortable. Folks, it is 61 degrees right now. <laughs> How about that? 61 degrees in the middle of August. Yes, everybody, we got that done in the nick of time. The tent is set up. I have it underneath this tarp partially. That's pretty much the best that I could do with the setup of the trees and the ground and whatnot. It will work. It will work. I know the camera doesn't do this justice, but this forest is so dark. You almost need a headlamp. Let me adjust the camera settings here. Let me show you all what it looks like. That's how dark it is right now. This is a stool that I've been testing out. It's from Big Agnes. This thing's pretty awesome, actually. When it comes to stools, most of them are pretty much the same. They're inexpensive, they're from China. The designs of those things aren't that great. Also, they're not that comfortable. This one basically fits like a chair. The difference is there's no back to it. It's still roaring with thunder out there, but so far, it doesn't seem like it's coming directly towards us, maybe going around us. The weather, from what I understand, is this. It's going to rain, basically for the rest of the afternoon. The rain is going to continue into tonight. And then it's supposed to slack off in the morning and then pick back up again. So my plan is to get out in the morning when it's not raining. We'll see how that goes. We'll see what the weather actually does. For this trip, everyone, I'm testing out some new gear. For an example, the Timberline 2. I've already done a waterproof test on this. It is waterproof. So now I'm going to test it for airflow, condensation, moisture control, and so on. I'm testing out this stool. I also have this little stove. This is from Soto. My buddy Mike, he sent me this. Brother, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, man. That's pretty cool, actually. So. Take a look here at the legs. You have four pot supports. They go up and then lock into place. I'm not sure how well that's coming through, but you can unlock it and pull them down, lock it and put them up. That's neat. This is part of a cook set. I will flash the name of this on the screen. Brother, thank you. By the way, later on in this episode, I have a bunch of shout outs to give. You all are so amazing. I appreciate everything that you do for us and for the channel. Oh no. That's not good.
the igniter is broken. Cheers everyone, cheers. Dark and nasty, just the way I like it. Oh, that's good. As I mentioned before, it's good to be back in North Carolina. It's good to be back here in the forest. This is one of my favorite places. I absolutely love it. It's peaceful, quiet. It's always rainy, it's always foggy. <laughs> the road up here, I don't remember exactly how many miles it is. It might be like 10 miles long, all gravel. It's surrounded by drop-offs on both sides at some points. It's pretty treacherous in the wintertime. People go off the road here, get hurt all the time. The area is heavily forested just like this. So anytime there's a thunderstorm, there's a good possibility that a tree is going to come down and block the road. That's why I have my chainsaw with me at all times. It's always in the back of the truck, ready to go. I've been in situations before, you're taking these backcountry roads, you know, you're maybe 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles in. Going around these curves, you'll come around a curve and there'll be a tree broken off, snapped off at the top, that has fallen directly in the middle of the road, blocking the entire thing, standing straight up. <laughs> ah, that sucks. If you don't have a chainsaw with you, that sucks. You come around a corner, you find that blockage. If you can't take care of it, you have to drive in reverse. Two miles, three miles, maybe longer. Anyways, as I was saying, it's good to be back to North Carolina. I love this. I do. The country is amazing, that's for sure. It's amazing, it's beautiful, but there's nothing like this. At least for myself. I'm sure you all feel the same about your areas the areas that you're comfortable with. But just in case you didn't see the previous adventures, Susie and I, we did a road trip across America. We went to South Dakota, but we also swung down into Colorado. I did a quick backpacking trip. That was an off-trail adventure, nothing but storms. The mosquitoes were so bad. <laughs> and the bug spray that I brought with me absolutely sucked. It's a new military product, a new military bug spray. It doesn't work. It may work for ticks, but it doesn't work for mosquitoes. I sprayed that stuff all over myself on my clothing. I would have mosquitoes on my shirt. I would have them on my face. They just did not care. It did not work. I'm not someone who likes to complain, but I have to tell you all, after that road trip, I couldn't sit down for probably about two weeks. I had planned to film another rain adventure last week, couldn't do it. You may know this, you may not, but when I was a freshman in high school, I was in a car accident and I broke my spine in two places. So the one thing I don't do is bend very well. So I could sit for short periods of time, but this road trip, it did a number on me, it did a number on my back. Ugh. To be honest, right now I'm uncomfortable. Not so uncomfortable that I can't sit here, that I can't enjoy this trip, but my back hurts. Oh man, that feels better. Whew. It's a good example of how some people have issues, and if you're one of those people, you have to learn how to work with them, work around them. Just like myself, going out for these adventures, I have back problems, I suffer from back pain, but hey, I can do it, you can do it. It's all about just figuring out how to work around your issues. My plan is to finish the coffee, then I'm going to get the tent set up for the night. Might as well just get that done, get all of the gear inside of the tent. That way if it gets real nasty, I can hunker down. I don't want to have gear all over the place if the conditions get worse. Before I set up the tent, I'm going to see if I can't get this igniter to work. 
Unfortunately, I don't have any tools this small to take it apart with me. There we go. <laughs> I think I fixed it. I was able to jiggle the wires in there. Got it. Ha <laughs> ha. Perfect. Soto makes excellent products. And anytime that you have an igniter like that, they're finicky. Looks like the winds are picking up some. There's like a fine mist coming through the trees, blowing underneath this tarp. What I could do is take my other tarp and set it up on the side of this one and basically just create a wall. And that would stop all of the moisture from coming in. I might do that, we'll see. The pad that I'm using here is the Sea to Summit Ether Pad. This pad is incredible. It's insulated, it's warm, it's super thick. If you're looking for comfort, that's the pad. Since my review went up, I've had a number of viewers purchase this and I've heard from them and they love it. It really is awesome. It's a little big inside of your backpack, but if you want comfort, I would recommend checking it out. It's funny, there's another YouTuber and I'm not talking bad about them, but they reviewed it and they didn't like it. And it's because they didn't use it correctly. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyways. Got my first aid kit here. Take some leave from my back. I've never taken anything other than like over the counter pain stuff. And that's because, well, there's many reasons, but I don't know. Maybe one day I will have to, but it's not today. As you all can see, I put my additional jacket on. It's uh, somewhat chilly. I tell you what, let's see just how cold it is. Let me get my thermometer. What I have here is basically a weather station. You can see there. It can tell you the wind speed, the temperature, and so on. There's also additional attachments here so you can set this thing up. I'm going to take this attachment and tie it to my post here. Then we'll monitor the conditions all night long. I don't care much about the wind data. What I'm interested in is the temperature. That's about it. Now, all I have to do is sync it with my phone through Bluetooth. It is 
84 degrees right now, 81% humidity. I have a little bit of coffee left that I'm finishing up. I'm just kicking back, relaxing, listening to the rain. It might clear up, folks. It might. I don't know. By the way, folks, you may remember a few weeks back, or maybe even a month ago, something like that. Anyways, uh, I challenged my good buddy Tony at AB Camping to find some music and put it in his video. One video, that's it. All he had to do is find some tracks that he likes, right? Well, he contacted me the other day and he admitted defeat. He gave up, he's not going to do it. <laughs> it's not easy, it's not easy at all. In one of his videos, Tony was commenting about the channel, talking about how good the reviews are and so on, but then he made a sly remark about the music that I use in my videos on occasion. So I challenged him, a friendly challenge. In one video, he had to find some songs that he likes so we could see what he likes to see whether or not I have better taste than he does, or vice versa. Well, he contacted me the other day, and he admitted defeat. He's not going to do it. He cannot find any music. It's not easy. It's not easy. I do the best I can with the music if I decide to put music in a video. Eh, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. That's how it goes. You can't please everybody, and I'm not going to. I try to find music that doesn't make your ears bleed that goes along with the situation, and I think I do a pretty good job. Based upon the comments and the feedback from you all, you all like it. Every once in a while there's someone who doesn't. Again, that's how it goes. You never know, they may have like the worst taste in the entire world. Tony, I accept your defeat. Cheers, Tony, cheers. I'm gonna pull up my radar here. It is working <laughs> a little bit, just enough to kind of load the radar itself. So I could see that there's one wave that's gone through. That's what's falling right now. But behind that, there's a line of storms coming this way. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. All of that is coming here. And that will be here later on tonight. This app is called My Radar. I've talked about this before. It's the free version. No, it's not sponsored. I don't do sponsorships, folks. Let me make that very, very clear. I never do sponsorships. I don't do product placement. I don't do paid reviews. I don't do any of that stuff. When I say the channel is agenda free, I mean it. The reason I bring that up is because after our road trip adventure, I received an email from a guy and he was super upset. He said that Ford gave us that van, Susie's van, and that it was like a sponsored plug thing or something or other. First off, that's incredibly stupid. I don't know of any car companies giving out vehicles. Susie and I bought that vehicle. We bought the van to travel in. We've had it for over a year. It's been on the channel in numerous adventures, so if this guy's upset now, he's late to the party. I corrected the guy, set him straight, never heard from him again. It goes to show just how tired people are of like all of the bullshit on YouTube as far as like the sponsorships, the advertisements inside of videos. You can't tell who's selling what or why someone's saying something or why someone's using something. So again, everyone, to set the record straight, the channel is completely agenda free. I don't care if you buy any of the products that you see me use. No company has ever paid me to use those products. No company has ever paid me to put a product in a video. Ford did not give me a van. That's so stupid. <laughs> and also super funny. That's hilarious. I practice what I preach. The channel's agenda free. You're not going to see an ad for like uh, some sort of, what was that stupid thing I saw the other day? It was like some sort of like morning shake or something or other. It's like nutrients that you mix up with water and drink it. I can't remember the name of it. I saw it on another YouTube video. They go from one thing right into talking about how they care about their nutrients and they're going to get it from this. 
can't stand that stuff. I can't stand being lied to. You all know this. Most people know what the channel's all about. So, just to set everyone straight one more time, there you go. I'm going to see if I can't get a fire going, everyone. It's nice and chilly, a good fire, that would feel nice. It's still raining, but it's not too heavy. I'm going to use one of these Bigfoot fire starters. They work pretty good. What I've discovered about these as they age, they don't peel apart very well. You can still get them to light, but it takes more work than it used to. Well, folks, we'll see if I got this fire to go or not. It's smoking. <laughs> That's a good sign. But this is just about the wettest conditions that you can imagine. The key to building a fire with wet, damp materials is to build it big. It needs to be big enough to dry itself out as it burns. <laughs> we got it going, everyone. It's nice and warm. Nice and warm. Still incredibly wet, incredibly damp. Keeping a fire like this going is a lot of work. It's just basically non-stop gathering because you, you can't let it even burn halfway out. It's all about keeping those wet materials on the outside, having them dry out and working their way in. What's your favorite part to a camping trip, folks? Is it the hiking in? Is it the sitting around camp, like around a fire, cooking dinner? What's your favorite part? I could say without a doubt, my least favorite is cooking. You may have noticed this already, but my channel doesn't really focus on the cooking part too much. There's other channels out there who do, and that's awesome. But for myself, it's not a big part of the channel. It's not really something that I like to do. If you're camping, like car camping, that's when you cook. But if you're going out for a backpacking trip, a hiking trip, it doesn't always make sense to cook a big meal, especially when you live in an area that has a lot of predators, like bears and so on, like this area. Since I started my channel roughly 10 years ago, I have constantly heard from viewers who thank me for not focusing on cooking. Anytime that I receive one of those emails, I've always found it interesting. Some viewers wanna watch a channel where someone's cooking and eating. That's a small part of my videos. I don't focus too much on the cooking or the eating part. Personally, I don't like watching people eat. You know what I mean? That's why I make it short and sweet here on the channel. With most of the content that I produce here on the channel, it's all about being out in the wild. Less to do with like civilization, more to do with nature. That's why I don't focus too much on the cooking stuff. Once you step away from the fire, then you realize just how cold it is. It's chilly, folks. Temperature's now in the lower 50s. By morning, temperature's in the 40s maybe, we'll see. Pretty nice. It's crazy to think that fall is coming. It's right around the corner. Before you know it, it'll be snowing.
I am looking forward to the snow. I cannot wait for that. Also, <laughs> I'm looking forward to like not mowing for six months. Where I live, you have six months of mowing and then six months of no mowing and it is sweet. I think it's beginning to rain, folks. It's not coming down heavy or anything like that, but it's enough to begin to dampen my clothing and I really can't take that chance. What I have here is half a package of Peak Refuel Bison Ranch Mashed Potatoes, and I added some chicken to it. I did a search online for these plastic bags here, like food grade resealable bags for like freeze dried meals and so on. These work, as you can see, but the quality of these is not very good. The uh, sealer has a tendency to peel off, so you really have to be careful. It's like a one use thing, but it works. It's a good way to split a meal when you don't want to consume the entire thing. I'm sitting underneath this tarp, but yet I can see that fire going. And I really want to be over there, but I don't want to get wet. I could have started the fire underneath this tarp. And I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't do that. And that's because I've already created that fire area. I don't want to start another one. This forest is so cool. And it takes so long for this moss to grow. I don't want to have like a fire pit over here, over there, over here, because all it's going to do is destroy that moss and mark up the terrain. So the care for the area, that's the fire area, and I'm not going to have another one. Before I have dinner, I need to do some shout outs. The first one goes out to a stranger. Someone sent me this titanium kettle. It was pretty sweet, and you may see it tomorrow morning but there was no name attached. So whoever sent that in, thank you so much. Bill, he sent in a stove. I can't wait to try that out. Thank you so much, man. Greg, thank you so much for keeping me going. With all the coffee, you're the man. And also, the white honey is amazing on toast. Christian, thank you so much for the lightweight shovel. Mike, brother, thank you so much for the Nightcore flashlight and the Soto stove. You are the man. Chris, thank you so much for the coffee and the whiskey chocolates. Those are amazing, by the way. Like, really, really good. Lisa, thank you so much for the Chicken Tramper Ultralight Gear Water Bottle Holder. <laughs> Did I get that out right? I'm not sure. A special thank you goes out to E. Thank you so much for the Kona Coffee. It is incredibly good. Greg, thank you so much for the backpacking meal. Dr. Bash, you blew my mind, buddy. I mean, you really did. You went above and beyond. Thank you so much for everything. Sean, thank you so much for the Eureka Bug Shelter. I can't wait to use that. And Dr. Lauren, thank you for the tent, man. I'm using it right here. Lauren, he wrote in and he was talking about how much he loves this tent. He wishes that it was lighter and so do I. This tent has been around for like 41 years, 41 years plus. How about that? It's an A-frame tent. I was worried about the waterproofness, but it is waterproof. I've had no leaking from this tent so far with my testing. Thank you all so much for everything. I really do appreciate it. You all rock. If you want to share something with the channel, you can do so. You will find an address in the description box down below. You will also find a gear list in the description box down below. Special note, the address down below, I don't live there. I just have a post office box in that area. I did that for privacy sake. Okay, 
bison chicken ranch potatoes. Here we go. Smells good. And it is good. It's really good, folks. This is better than most things that you can buy at the grocery store. I've mentioned this in previous episodes, but there's a misconception that like freeze-dried meals are like chemical bombs. And that's not the case at all. You can't freeze dry a lot of chemicals. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. I wasn't sure this was going to make a good meal like all by itself, but it is. It's uh, super calorie rich. The entire package was like 1200 calories. This is about half of that plus the chicken. I decided to end the evening, well, I guess the afternoon, with a final cup of coffee here. A gourmet blend of Taster's Nasty and Folgers and something else. <laughs> kind of tastes like dirt, and I love it. You might not be able to tell on the camera, but it's getting dark now. Pretty sure that was thunder. It's far off, but I can, yeah, oh yeah. Hmm. You never know, folks. It might get interesting tonight. Can't wait. <laughs> Well, everybody, it is now 15 minutes till nine o'clock. It's raining rather nicely outside. I'm hearing some thunder. It's incredibly foggy out there. Can't see much of anything, really. I mentioned the uh, little flashlight that my buddy Mike sent me. Check this out. This is from Nightcore. And it has like a little LED screen on it. Very different. Mike, my friend, thank you so much, buddy. This is very, very interesting. Level one is one lumen. Level two is 15. Level three is 65. Level four is 200. That is definitely neat. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate that. I uh, put this lanyard on it. That way I can easily hang it from things. Also, I can keep it around my wrist if I want to. Yeah, folks, I think we're in for a rainy, stormy night. Again, everyone, there should be a break in the morning. At that time, I'm going to pack everything up in a hurry, bounce out of here before it starts up again. It's been very quiet and peaceful. I haven't seen anyone, haven't heard anything. About the only thing that I've heard today are some birds and some squirrels, and that's it. Outside of all of the thunder, I guess. I'm going to say goodnight for now. I'm going to seal up the tent, go to sleep. I will bring you all back if it begins to storm, but otherwise, I'll see you all in the morning. Good night for now.
Good morning, folks. Good morning. It is 7.58. And it's a wet, foggy, windy morning. Did I mention that it's wet? <laughs> it rained so hard last night. I really didn't sleep much. We had heavy rain and thunderstorms all night long. It did not stop until maybe a couple hours ago. And if you look at the radar right now, there's more storms on the way. You can hear the showers and stuff right now just coming through. Because I slept so little last night, I'm going to make some real coffee. Some strong coffee. Everyone, cheers, cowboy coffee time. By the way, that last step there, took some cold water, dropped it down the chute, poured it in the middle. That causes the coffee grounds to sink. That way you get the perfect pour. Nothing but coffee, no grounds. Cheers everyone, cheers. Oh yeah chocolate Guatemalan or something or other. It is fantastic. The weather is also fantastic. It is incredibly foggy this morning. Just raining away. It's perfect. For breakfast, I have some oatmeal real termat fruit muesli, which is oatmeal, raisins, pineapple chunks, banana chunks, honey, sugar, cinnamon. Mmm. Let's go ahead and check the weather. So right now it looks like it's 58.1 degrees, 100% humidity. I was thinking that the temperature went up. It's not quite as cold as it was yesterday. More than likely a warm front has come through and that's what's causing the instability in the atmosphere. That's why we have these thunderstorms. As far as the tent goes, slept great in it. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to think about this tent when I first set it up and that may have shown in my preview like the materials, they feel cheap. It has an exceptionally low waterproof rating, but yet the tent doesn't leak. The quality is good. It's heavy, but again, that goes back to the materials. This is made from a polyester. To have a strong polyester tent, you have to have a thick material, and that means more weight. So this tent's like six something pounds, almost seven, I think. That was a palace for myself last night. Well, everyone, I think it's time for me to say goodbye. I need to wrap this up, get home before the next round of storms come. Breaking everything down in a wet forest like this is always interesting. Luckily, we have this tarp.
everybody. It's time to go home. Everything's been cleaned up, picked up. And I'm sure you could hear the thunder. There's a storm coming. <laughs> we got this wrapped up in the nick of time. That always makes me happy, folks. It does. Anytime that you can break down camp without getting soaking wet, it's a good day. I would stay, but I brought with me just enough supplies for this trip. I do have a little extra, but not really enough. I wanna thank you all for joining me for this trip. I appreciate you all. Take care, everyone. Stay dry. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing or even supporting on Patreon or here on YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. I have roughly a mile through the woods here to go before I get to my truck. And this is what the forest looks like. It is without a doubt warmer today than it was yesterday. I'm almost hot. I'm going to hike out of here and say goodbye. Bye for now. I'll see you next week. Strength and honor.